Well, all right, Journey Church, man, it's good to be in God's house tonight. <laughs> Man, I love Saturday nights. There's just something special about Saturday nights. Coming here, worshiping God, standing here, and uh, be able to share God's word. It's just a, it's an awesome thing to be here in Jacksonville, Florida. You know, uh, my name's Brian Lammer. I'm one of the pastors here. If I have not met you yet, man, welcome to Journey Church. It is our pleasure that you're here. Out of 800 churches in Jacksonville, you chose to come here on a Saturday night. You know, one of the most exciting things that we have, um, one of the biggest ministries and one of the wonder, most wonderful opportunities that we have today is this internet campus that we have because we have people worshiping tonight all the way from Japan. We have the Wilhelms here. They're watching me. We just welcome you guys. Thank you so much. There's over 19 families right now worshiping with us. And I'll tell you, that is an amazing thing as God begins to take the ministry outside of these four walls so we can just share the gospel with as many people as we possibly can. You know, you find yourself tonight in uh, one of the series that I believe will be a catalyst for taking Journey Church, the body of Christ, to the next level. Tonight, we are wrapping up Believe it or not, this is the very end of our Practical Atheist series, but this is what I do know. I do know that God is touching and changing lives. I believe that his spirit is alive today. He wants to work in and through us tonight, even in this very place. So can you do me a favor? Can you say, it's okay, it's okay. if the message is hard? The message is hard. Because the word, the word of God is changing my life. That's, you know... I want you to do, <laughs> I don't know where that came from, but I thought I'd just share it with you. So do me a favor tonight as we get ready and we buckle in for one more, one more from the heart, one more from the word. I pray that no one would tune out, but that we would all be receptive. If, if this is something that is, seems repetitive to you, I pray that you won't check out tonight, but you allow the Holy Spirit to touch and change your heart, change your life, so that we as a people and as a body of believers would never be the same again. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for all that you desire to do. We are excited because you desire not for us to, to turn our lives over to you and to remain the same. It's your desire that we would hear your words and that we would be doers of your word. And so tonight as we look to the scriptures that are alive and changing us every single day, Lord, I pray that you would cause them to come alive in our hearts tonight. Lord, I pray that every word that is spoken of man would fall to the ground, but every word that is spoken by your precious Holy Spirit, that it would change us and it would make us new, that it would cause us to live for you all the days of our lives. So tonight, we surrender to your word and we say that God, you are an amazing God. We love you as a people and we say that you are all that we need in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. amen. Tonight, we are going to talk about a couple of things. The title of the message tonight is, I believe in God, but I don't want to be a freak about it. Okay? I believe in God. I believe that he exists, but I don't want to be a freak about it. We're going to look at what we would call symptoms of a lukewarm person, symptoms of a lukewarm Christian, just like a doctor would come and you would go to the doctor's office and you would go and, and you would sit on that crazy table with all the paper and you would sit down and he would take out one of those things and he would say stick your tongue out and then you, you know let's look at your eyes let's look at your ears how many guys have know the routine he's looking for symptoms he's going to ask you a few questions he's going to prod you a little bit and he's trying to find out what exactly is wrong with you tonight we are going to look at the symptoms of a lukewarm christian and we're going to use the bible as our guide we're going to use the bible and the word of god to instruct us tonight on where the lord would take us as a people i believe in god but i don't want to be a freak about it we know the freaks out there, don't we? We know freaks, right? We, we, we see them in, in the marketplace. We see them in our workplaces. We see the Jesus freaks where they go out and, and they take their Bible everywhere that they go and, and they want to pray before every meal and everything and they, they just believe and stand no matter what is going on. We know those freaks are out there. 
right? We, we know the freak that stands on the street corner with the gospel and with the Bible and they go out there and they share the gospel of Jesus Christ. They go out there and they do all that they can for God. We've labeled these people that are passionate about God and, and have zeal above all zeal. We've labeled them as freaks and all they desire to do is glorify the name of Jesus, to go out and to share the gospel, to go out and make known the name of Jesus. You know, I was thinking about what it is to be a freak and I, I was trying to you know I know Jesus freak is Pastor Eric's one of his favorite songs and he said at his funeral he wants it played I think it's a little morbid to be talking about that as young as he is but here's the deal I in my heart desired to be labeled that and, and, and it's not because I'm drawing attention to myself or, or you're drawing attention to yourself. It's because God desires that we have such passion and such zeal for him that there is no possible way that you and I would be labeled anything other than someone that is in love with Christ, someone that has devoted their whole life to who he is. But what's happened is, is we've, we've looked on these people and we've called them freaks. We, we call them tambourine tammy as they run around the, the sanctuary. You know who I'm talking about. Freaks. Freaks for God. But here's the deal. Throughout history, there has been trends, generations. We can look back in history and see that that people's hearts are not close to God. In fact, they acknowledge God with their lips, but their hearts are far from him. In fact, the prophet Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 29, verse 13 says this. Even in his own day, he shared, the Lord says that the people come near me to me with their mouth and they honor me with their lips, but what? But their what? Their hearts are what? Say it aloud, are far from me. They honor me with their lips and their mouths, but their hearts are far from me. Now, the only thing I can think of is that, you know, an old boss or a family member, you know that aunt or uncle, and you're, and you're having this conversation, and your lips are moving, and, and they're communicating with this person, right? You're having a conversation, but your mind and your heart is like in South Florida at the beach somewhere. You're, you've checked out. You know what I'm talking about. You're, you're honoring that person with your lips, but your hearts are far from them. And what the prophet Isaiah is saying is that the people that are in this time and in this day, they're honoring God with their lips. They're, they're going to the synagogue and they're sacrificing and they're worshiping and they're doing all that they can, but it's just lip service to God. It's not a heartfelt expression of what he is doing on the inside. Lukewarm Christian, a practical atheist, someone who believes in God but lives as if he doesn't exist. We believe, we as a people, I, I look at generations past, I read the Bible and I get frustrated sometimes because I look and I go, why are you so stupid? Some, you know, you look at the people and you go, man, why are you so dumb? You, you know, God says to turn to me, you go your own way. If you turn to me and you live this way, then you're gonna, you know, you're gonna see the blessings of God, you're gonna move and you're gonna reign with me and all these things, right? But we are the same stubborn headed people that we read about every single week when we read the word of God, aren't we? Lukewarm Christianity. Turn in your Bibles with me to Revelation chapter 3. That's where we're going to spend most of our time tonight. Let me explain what's going on inside of this scripture here. But before I do, before we, before we jump into what's going on in Revelation chapter 3, let me ask you this. If any of you guys, when was the last time you just threw up? When was the last time you, you just... Yeah, you think Mary Jo, yesterday, okay, all right. When, think about it, think, just recall, you know, recall those times, remember the last time you were sick or you felt nauseous and you just, you just could not take it, your stomach couldn't take it, you just, you just threw up. I can be honest with you tonight and just tell you that that is the worst feeling in the world. In fact, what's even worse is the feeling before you throw up, isn't it? You know, that nauseous feeling where you're just starting to get that. It, 
It's, you know. And then all of a sudden, you know, it comes out. And, and, and I've got to believe that this is one of the worst feelings in the world. I mean, I'd rather be sick with fever. I'd rather probably have a broken arm or something instead of just throwing up. And, you know, you know they say worshiping the porcelain god and all that. Just, you know, just giving the you know, alms to that. But the, the thing about it is, is that in Revelation chapter 3, Jesus is speaking to the church through John. And he begins to speak to John about a church. This church was one of seven in the scripture. And Jesus had nice things to say, somewhat nice things to say about six of the seven, but had nothing great to say about the seventh church. The seventh church is the church of Laodicea. You know the story. You've, you've read the story before, but tonight... I want to just kind of give you a glimpse of what is going on. See, nearby, uh, Herpolis was famous for its hot springs. And, and Colossae was famous for its cold mountain water springs. Okay, so you've got two cities nearby. One is famous for its hot springs, and one is famous for its cold springs. But the church of Laodicea was known for its lukewarm, tempid, dirty water that ran under the city in this aqueduct. And if you were un... If, it was, if someone came in and they were unaccustomed to the water there, they would get violently sick and spit the water out. They wouldn't even know what to do. They would taste the water and they would spit it out. Now, a little bit of history on Laodicea, 35 years prior to this being written, it had been totally and utterly destroyed. 